It's time for Windows Weekly. The new Windows 10 is here. The new Windows 10 is here. No, not the final release, but we do have an update to the beta. Paul and Mary Jo will talk about that, why you will want to install it on desktop, and whatever you do, not install it on Windows Phone. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 414, recorded Wednesday, May 20th, 2015. A little stabby. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on-demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit Lynda.com slash Windows. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash Windows. And by Braintree. If you're working on a mobile app and searching for a simple payment solution, check out Braintree. With one simple integration, you can offer your customers every way to pay, period. To learn more and for your first $50,000 in transactions fee-free, go to BraintreePayments.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly with our brand new music. Thank you, Carl Franklin of .NET Rocks. Hey. 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 I like all the haying. <laughs> hey. Yeah, I just... Dur, 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 dur. Hey. I think they actually, uh, they hired uh, Angus to do that. Hey! Right. Mr. He, Paul... He would say, oi! 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 <laughs> oi! Mr. Paul Therot, therot.com. There he is with the Therot teacup. He's famous for his teacup. What does that teacup have in it? Coffee. Good coffee. What kind of... Co I never asked you what kind of coffee. Dunkin' Donuts? What's in there? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we used to get this coffee from uh, Italy called Guglielmo, but now we are Ooh, the I place like we got it locally doesn't stock it, so we've been getting Ely coffee. Ely, lately. my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Lisa, says, Lisa doesn't believe me when I say Ely is the best. We drink a coffee here that's uh, locally, <laughs> locally brewed and bottled. No, locally uh, roasted by the Petaluma Coffee Company. It's called Godfather's Roar, <laughs> and uh, it's 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 over roasted. It's really dark. Hey man, it makes a fine cup of coffee. I'm drinking it right now. Also here from allaboutmicrosoft.com, Mary Jo Foley. Hi, Mary Jo. Hi, Leo. For some reason, I feel you're drinking a cup of green tea right now. I am a tea drinker more than kale a tea. Drink. Yeah. No kale today. <laughs> no, no kale. Kale. And yeah. One day before. I drank a kale smoothie on the show. I do Never remember. I still get a, like a little <laughs> shudder up my back when I think about that. Oh, you know, it's so funny because. I now have a kale smoothie. Uh, when we pick up uh, Lisa's son at school and take him to his tutors, we have half an hour to kill, and there's a Jamba Juice right in between. And we often stop for a little uh, a little smoothie, and I always get some kale put in it in honor nice. of you, Mary Jo Foley. Good, nice. good work. Turns it kind of a greenish brown. But other yes. than that... Yeah, it's not the best color, but no. it's good for oh, you. Oh, it's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> kind of rocking an Irish forehead today. You are. What, even you out are. in the you sun? Look really... Sun? Yeah, I just like walked around for a while like a homeless person. <laughs> but I don't know why. You look great. <laughs> why I'm red. I you guess look, I was you look good, Paul. <laughs> a little sun goes a long way with Paul Therott. Yep. Yep. Paul, did you, 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 you threatened on the Twitter <laughs> I to, did. In, to install. I was joking. I hope you were. Install the new stupid, build yeah. of Windows. Oh, <laughs> I am. <laughs> to install the new build of Windows 10 on your yeah. uh, Skype machine while we were doing the show. You didn't do that. I though. did install it on other machines. Oh, good. Yeah. Um, and anything? and I will install it on this machine. It looks good. Preview build one zero one two two. Yep. Do I have to be on the inner fully ring? All the new stuff either. Do I have to be in the super fast track or? Uh, yeah, fast ring build. Yeah. Fast ring build. Mm -hmm. or it just FRB. came out an hour ago. Yep. <laughs> you guys. So. Looks good though. Is is it is is it a big difference? No, it's a lot of fit of fetish type stuff, I would say. 
Now but you, the, you know, the MSN apps have all been updated, uh, which we had seen in late ah, builds, but they're okay. really, really nice looking, as yeah. which they always were. But they have a new layout, and they're really nice. You know what I have to do? I, I've been remiss. I should really get it uh, on this machine so I can show everybody. I will for next week. I'll have... Uh, it literally just came out. I mean, I it, yeah. you know, it, you might not have had it yet anyway. Right. Um, I, you're, are you punking me when you write the line, the march toward late July launch continues? That's just a joke, right? I'll let the uh, antagonists um, answer that charge. <laughs> uh, Ms. Antagonist? What the hell? <laughs> you said last week that's that was uh, some OEM making a mistake. Now, now we're back? Yeah. No, it, it was an OEM who, the only mistake they made was saying it. That's, ah. Uh, I think it is going to be late July from everything I oh. continue to hear. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So this is yet another milestone along the road. Yeah. They, they haven't yet said this is feature complete, but it looks like they're getting there. No, but, pretty much. you know, the language they used was, you know, less less new features going forward. Mm -hmm. Um Tastes a lot of talk multiple filling. times mentioned, you know, as we were gearing up now for the end of this thing. I mean, wow. yep. I think all signs are pointing to this coming to a conclusion. Jiminy yep. Christmas. Yeah. Although not really a conclusion, like we've said before. They're, they're going <laughs> to continue sorry. The insider <laughs> ring, right? Fair and enough. everybody's still going to get billed. Oh, have they backtracked again, Mary Jo? <laughs> yeah. uh, they're going to keep going. They're going to keep having okay. things go forward with the insider program. And also, you know, as when you buy a PC later this year, if it has Windows 10, you'll have updates that came out since the time they declared it mm -hmm. RTM. <sighs> but what is new in this one? Like this, this build that came out today, it's more, I, I saw them say well, there was some new stuff with the start menu and continuum and um, Yeah, so browser. some refinements there. Um, yeah. Most of them are just minor visual things, I would say. Yeah. Uh, they they remove the toggle for start screen and start menu mm -hmm. uh, because they feel like most people are going to choose one or the other based on the device or use tablet mode to have it happen automatically. What will tablet uh, do? That'll be a start screen. It, yeah, when, when in tablet mode. Yeah. So uh, people, you think most people will just live in uh, start menu until they go tablet? Well, yeah, I think if you're on a desktop computer, you live in start menu, period. You don't, yeah. you never want it to switch, so why have a right. button that's out there taking up space the whole time? That makes sense. You can still manually change it if you want to. You just can't do it right from the start menu. You have to go in settings. and Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, the other new stuff, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff added to Edge, which is still called Project Spartan in this build, but uh, the new tab page that they showed off in build is there. In private browsing is there. You know, a bunch of other small things like that. Um Trying to see what else is. Done. I mean, I, it, it seems like some of the colorizations are a little different in transparency. It's kind of nicer. How about those big ugly f icons? Oh, they're big and ugly, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> they're bigger and uglier. Bigger and uglier. Well, that's yeah. an improvement. No, the, you know they didn't talk about this in the post, but like I said, those MSN apps have all been updated. You know, news, yeah. Um, yeah. money, sports, etc. Uh, those are all really nice looking now. Really, really nice. Um, and then it was a, they talked about a, default, a change to the default apps functionality, which I, I have to say only half understood. But I guess in Windows 8.1, only Win32 apps can actually trigger an OS prompt that says, you know, do you want to change the default app? But now any app can. And they have a new UI for that. I haven't ah. seen that yet, but uh, that's part of it. Uh, but it looks, I mean, it looks nice. Are you writing a book on this, Paul? <laughs> yeah. Um, the question is whether I'm writing one book or two books. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. What does so, that mean? That's well, because there's phone and then there's computer. Oh, I see. And it's I think they need windows, to be different. Books. One book. It's one Windows, one book. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, no. Two Windows. I, two well, so I have, I'm, I'm on the fence. But <laughs> two Windows, more money. Yeah, maybe. More yeah. Windows, more money. Well, it money. seems like I could repur. Yeah, money because I'm really clearly be becoming rich. Is the it's idea. big bucks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, you could make a case for doing two since they have two different launch dates, right? Oh, tell me yeah, about Yeah, and I, I'm actually, I'm trying to think of a way. The problem is, it'd be nice to be able to just reuse all of the text that was the same between the two books. Because a lot of the stuff would be describing the same things. Yeah. Um, but then that becomes a an update nightmare, yeah. right? So yeah. every time something in Project Spartan changes, I have to go to the exact place in both mm -hmm. versions. And, and so I got to think about that. I'm trying to figure that one out. But I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Yeah, because Windows Windows for PCs we know launches this summer, but Windows for phones yep. after that. 
but a couple uh, of weeks after that, not. No, we don't know when. Uh, I bet it's more than a couple I bet months. It's like fall, don't you? Yeah, I think October launch and real. I mean, actual availability of devices like November. Yeah. You know, based yeah, on because, history. Yeah, I was going to say based on the latest preview for that, which came out um, last week, right after we did Windows Weekly, they delivered uh, Windows 10 Mobile 10080. And I saw you and others, people say it's still pretty buggy, that phone build. The phone build is a steaming pile oh. of... Uh -oh. <laughs> the phone build is really oh. bad. And actually, I, I the, the, the desktop PC build looks great. I mean, I just installed it, but it, it does look great. Um, the phone build was notably bad from the second it was installed. And I actually, I'll, I'll give this warning out. It's too late, I think, for almost anybody who's going to hear it now, but... Wait, if you think back to February when they first announced the beta for phones, uh, there was a Windows Insider app that they had put out for phone, and I installed it on my main phone, which is the Lumia 930, thinking the desktop builds look pretty good. You know, clearly the phone builds will look great. And then you may recall that that first build that they issued only worked on six or seven phones. It was all low-end stuff, and it was really disappointing. And so I kind of just forgot about it. You know, I, I and over the course, and then when the big build came out, that finally supported a bunch of phones. One of the few phones it didn't support was the Lumia 930. And so this whole time, the Insider app's actually been on my phone that I've been carting around all day long, every day, but never doing anything because I just had one of those phones that never was going to get the build. So I kind of forgot it was there. I was testing it on other machines or other phones, and it's a the phone builds have universally been pretty bad. And um, when this last build came out, I... Like I said, I'd forgotten about it. And so one day I looked at my phone and it said, hey, you have a new update to install. And it was Windows 10. And I said, oh, God, no. Like, and there's no way to back out of it. Once this thing has downloaded and started the install process, you can put it off. You can put it off. And then it's going to say, hey, on this day, this thing's installing, you know. And I woke up, I think it was yesterday, and this thing had, it had installed Windows 10. And now my phone doesn't work. So oh, no. I've had to switch to a, uh, my 1520 temporarily until I, I'm going to have to wipe it out. It, it literally doesn't work. You can, it just is yeah. unworkable. I, I saw a bunch of people saying this happened to them um, on Twitter. Yeah. And they're like, now what do I do? Like, I didn't want yep. that build. And now it's just automatically going to come to my phone every time. A lot, right. A, a lot of people saying, well, so there must be some way to short circuit this, right? Maybe uninstall yeah. the app or, you know, nope. No. <laughs> it's, it's, it's barreling down the tracks. So Thanks. you're going to have to, I'm going to have to, and you will have to, if this has happened to you use the Lumia software recovery tool to go back to whatever the last supported version is, probably 8.1. That eight thing one. scares me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. No, you said it's well, good luck with it, but, well, for example, so I don't, I, actually, I can look. Um, one of the things that's on this phone is every single photo I've taken in 2015, right? Now, granted, I have uh, downloaded a bunch of them to my PC or to OneDrive or whatever, um, but, you know, I kind of want to make sure I don't lose any of these things. And it's that's eight gigabytes of photos. Um, so that's one thing I had to deal. So I, even though it's like the screen won't come up. Um, in fact, I can. It's so it's just it's funny. I picked it up. It's like it's warm. Right. Um, if you can, if you can see it, it will be funny because it will actually work. Right. So it looks fine. It looks normal. And then you do the lock screen thing and you type my code. And it tells me it's wrong because I can never do it right the first time. And this is what this is the start screen. It looks like this. <laughs> it just says <laughs> loading. Loading. And this will never correct itself, right? Loading. The entire time I've had Windows 10 on this phone, I've seen the start screen one time. Uh, and really? I was able to launch an app and then that was it. I ne I've never seen it come back. So it's just never, it will sit here like this. This will never, it will never fix. Oh. It's just never. Somebody said a hard, uh, somebody saying in the chat room, a hard mm -hmm. reboot will fix it. Have you tried a hard reboot? Like reset, you know. Like what well, is it? That, you press that wipes the... out everything on the phone. Oh, oh, that's right. You yeah, said sure. I could wipe there. it out and yeah, go yeah, back yeah, to a yeah, yeah. that I know it's terrible, I guess. Or I could just go back to A1, which well, I know works. How, so. Is there a way to reset it without erasing stuff? No. No. Okay. Because that's what they're saying. They're saying reset it. I, but, but you don't want to do that because as I you have mentioned. I've done everything I can do. Yeah, it, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh so well. and we, and I think the uh, the uh, tool would also uh, erase it, right? Yeah, the, yeah right. Because what it's doing is downloading the the retail right. image and then it's blowing Re away whatever's right. on the phone and so blasting the the stock image yeah. back onto it. So uh, there's a little word of caution. 
Yeah. yeah, again, it's <laughs> delivered a little too late for most people, sadly. This yeah. thing came out about six days ago. Not for me, because uh, I haven't, uh, I didn't update my 1520 yet. So, I, I, by the way, I've never done this before, but I had this previously on my 1520. I had it on an 830, I think, a 635. I had, I, whatever it was on, I can't, I don't see them here anymore, but whatever of three phones it was on, I removed it from all of them. Yikes. It's, this yeah. build is terrible. Yikes. Yeah. But, Conversely, the uh, desktop Windows 10 is great. It looks great. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I just, I can't, you know. Is it time to put it on my Dell? Uh, is it time? Let's talk next week. Let's talk next week. Okay. If this thing heads out to slow ring, uh, yeah, maybe. End of July isn't that far off, folks. No. And that's the release. And wouldn't you be better off unless you're, gosh, I don't know at this point if you haven't installed the beta. Right. Why wouldn't you wait two months? <laughs> right. I know. I'm waiting. Uh, I am going to yeah. wait. I mean, it'd be yeah. sure. and we don't know, or do we know, what it's what the experience will be like for those who are running the beta when the full version comes out? Some, they said the, the goal is in place upgrade. Yeah, right? but in, yeah, in the past, know. it's not been a good experience. They have said that they intend to support that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And once again, I ask, what could go wrong? <laughs> I mean, look, if, nothing, if you're tactical enough to have been installing this thing all along and you've actually updated build yeah. to build or whatever, right. yeah. you know, you're going to want to, you're going to want to clean this. If you this want a fresh install, whether you need to or yeah. not. But that's, but that's kind of my point is if you haven't done it yet, you're obviously not a fast ring type of guy or gal. <laughs> yes. You're a slow wait. ring. And so wait, two more months. That's all. Yeah. Right. Right. Mary Jo, are you a fast ring kind of guy? A, I am a, not. She's a slow ringer. I could tell. I am. <laughs> a dead ringer, you might say. Dead ringer, yeah. So. No, uh, I, I just don't see, especially at this point, it's like, you're, it's it's fit and finished now. So yeah. if, you're, if you're really, really Why? in a rush to right. see it before July, okay. Or it, of course, if, you know, if you're a developer, you would have already been installing right. it. You would or assume. IT person. Um, Right. Do you think some businesses are actively, well, that's some is the word. Do you think businesses yeah. are actively considering going from seven some to are. 10? Yeah. Yeah, some are definitely. Yeah. And um, those people are starting already to kick the tires in very controlled ways and controlled settings, you know, just seeing what they, right. what, you know, how much of a learning curve there's going to be and what they right. think of the experience now and whether they actually do want to plan for the upgrade. Right. So, yeah, I think people are doing that. So it, they might quite re, it might quite reasonably be uh, somebody who's saying, "Well, and it's, now it's coming down the pipe at me. I better look yep. at it." Yeah, definitely. but they're not going to put it on a production machine because they have all those old computers lying around. <laughs> not now, especially <laughs> when you fired the CEO. Yeah. You know, they got his old computers. So put yeah. it on that one. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. It's getting there though, and and you know it's it's um. One other thing about today's build I saw in the uh, blog post that's probably worth noting is if you have a machine using an AMD processor, you should be uh, a bit wary <laughs> about this build because uh, they they warned it was, that it was. I it think AMD? it was an AMD graphics. graphics oh, it's process. the graphics. That's different because a lot right. of people have right. that. I think yeah. so. A lot of people will Graphic, have an Intel right. CPU, but but could have right. an AMD GPU. You're right. Oh. It's AMD GPU. And okay. um, if you have that, if they warn Spartan could be crashy Ooh. in this build. Well, I better not <laughs> put it on my crashy. Mac Pro. Then. It's like, a, like it's crashy. feeling a little stabby. Exactly. Yeah. Stabby. <laughs> yeah. I feel a little yeah. dead. <laughs> um, okay. That's, that's actually good to know because I was yeah. going to put it on my Mac Pro, but now I won't. That has two dual Radeons in there. It will crash twice as hard, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> I am putting it on here so we can uh, open it up. But I noticed the ISO I'm downloading is from April, so I'll have to download, install. Yeah, and then update it. And then right, update, right. Yeah. So I, I, got, I had told someone the wrong information on Twitter. The, the ISOs don't come out until the, the slow ring, right? So, But if you, turn, but if you the, download the ISO and you're in the fast ring, it should give you an update pretty quick, right? Yes. Yeah, immediately. Yep. So that's the way I'll do it. Yes, yeah. yes, and they, yes. You know, we just never know which ones they're going to push to the slow ring. If it, they they don't push every build that's in the fast ring to the slow. Right. What about um, app location compatibility? Somebody in the chat room is saying his Lightroom is not going to, the new Lightroom creative uh, cloud is not lo not loading, not opening. 
But then somebody else is saying, I ran it with no issue. Oh, well. <laughs> well, Leo, I haven't checked every single application. Every single... I just you installed haven't? Two minutes ago, but... How can you expect to be <laughs> the, the guy who writes the book? Um, I mean, I will. No, I know you will. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, honestly, I was running a leaked build before this one. It was... Um, I don't remember the exact build number. I want, you know, so this one's 122. I think it might have been 112 or 114 or somewhere in there. And I mean, I put some, I had full blown Photoshop on there. I, I had, have, still have, I upgraded it. Um, Visual Studio uh, 2015 release candidate. Um, I had some pretty heavy duty stuff on there. Uh huh. So I'm, I just downloaded the ISO and it's 10074. It's the old one. Right. Yeah. So I'll let you know. I before the show is over, I will have <laughs> Windows oh, yes. one oh one two two or whatever it is running. All right. I believe you. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, I have to put the product key in here. That's so weird that there's it was still a product key. Are they gonna have a product key? I guess they will still have to they're not giving up product keys. Even though they're giving away the operating system. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> we don't know. Another question that I, no one knows. I think it's fair to say there will be product keys. Yeah, yeah. because it's, not yeah. everything is free. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, it, free or not, whatever. You it, Let's say your computer gets Windows 10 for free because it qualifies. Right. There should be a product key tied to that hardware configuration. It makes sense to have that one-to-one -one relationship, right? And hopefully that's how it happens because you could go back later, get the ISO, do a clean install. You could blow it away. Two years from now, do a clean install. It should just work. Right. And so that's the, that's my expectation. But again, you know. Who knows? A lot of speculation, but we don't know. What evil lurks <laughs> in the hearts of men. Yep. In the heart of the fast ring builds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this is exciting. Not such good news for Windows Phone 10. Um, dot, uh, put off build 180. One, I'm sorry. 10080. Yep. It's a... In the words of Paul Therat, it's a freaking mess. It's, <laughs> it's a I, um, freak I show find there. I I wrote about this. Um, it is a freaking mess. But the, you know, the build, like you said, is is one zero zero eight zero. Yeah. And if you, I don't have it here. Geez, I can't find this. But if you install it and you look, at, you go to settings about. Yeah. You get the version number. Yeah. And of <laughs> course, the the version number is something completely oh, different. Oh. Yeah. Because no. Microsoft, you know, like <laughs> like right. this, because that's the way they do things. So the version number is. 10.0.12562.84. Got it. <laughs> so, you know, why? Because, uh, you know, yeah. Microsoft. Now, Paul, I'm just going to make a mention of this. Paul does his own graphics on his website. That's always been true and no less true on therot.com. I, I, I recognize that's the Park Guell in Barcelona. Yes, it is. Yep. Because mm -hmm. they launched that phone at my little World Congress in Barcelona. Ah, so that's a little Spaniard boy using yes, his, his, his Lumia. Using a 640, I believe, yeah. 640 XL. And that's a real person? Or is that a, is he a model? I assume it's a model, yeah. Oh, it's not yeah. your picture? It's a stock It's a stock photo. It's a stock photo. But I like the park well. I think that that's a nice so. touch. Yeah. yeah, It's a great park. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so all of the Man. 640, 640XL stock photos have uh, Barcelona. Barcelona oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's neat. Oh, really? Huh. Yep. And Paul has on his website screenshots and uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. Stuff and nonsense. Oh, yeah. It's and full of hamburgers, the, Leo. Full of hamburger we, menu. Look at we that. We're to talk about the Office apps. Office oh, yeah. apps for the um, Windows Phone yeah. build, right? So that's one thing that was new in that build that Paul doesn't love. There, If you go to the beta store in, in that phone build, you can get for the first time the new Office apps um, for the, the Office Universal apps for Windows Phone, the touch first ones. Uh, and that's, we've been waiting for the preview of that since I think um, the end yeah. of April, right? Yep. At yeah, least uh, since I think Build was when they announced it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or just around that time. Yeah. Because it was delayed. I, like we originally thought that was going to happen was. during Ignite, I think originally, and then maybe the week after Ignite. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think it was the delay was probably the Build. All yeah. right. Okay. The other thing you can get that way, by the way, in this build is the new Xbox app, right? Which is going to replace the Ooh. Smart Glass Ooh. app. Uh, that's and it, you know, it, it closely follows the PC version. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nice looking. 
Okay. Well, here we go. I'm installing uh -oh. it now. <laughs> there you go. It'll be fun. See how it goes. See how it goes. Um, let's take a break, and then uh, I would like to kind of go into details on how on the upgrades and so forth, because you have more information on that. Thanks to an Australian blogger. <laughs> but first a word from lynda.com. Oh, I love lynda.com. It's a great place to learn the stuff you would like to learn, whether it's for your business, you want to get a better job or promotion, or for fun, for your hobby, or both. It doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. That's one of the beauty parts about lynda.com. I want you to go to lynda.com slash windows actually you know what i'm gonna do listen up or turn on your tone <laughs> and that <laughs> that will take you right there how you like that huh are we modern welcome fans of windows weekly lynda.com for the curious for people who want to make things happen for people who want to just have more fun in their hobbies Maybe you want to take better photos. Maybe you want to learn HTML or master Excel or sharpen your Photoshop skills. They got it all. Some of the new lynda.com courses, and there's new ones every every week, include advanced, this is, this is my hobby, advanced Microsoft Project Relational Database Design with FileMaker Pro. How about Agile at Work? Planning with Agile User Stories. You know, uh, this I, I took this course because we were our new web uh, site, was done agilely, and we had to do user stories, and I didn't know anything about that. So, boy, this was a great course. I've talked about Code Clinic before, their multi-course series. You get lynda.com's experts. By the way, their experts are great teachers and real experts in the field. So in Code Clinic, you get a code challenge, and uh, they offer solutions. They have a bunch of experts in uh, different uh, languages, C++, C Sharp, Java, PHP, Python, and Ruby. And now JavaScript, C, R, and Swift. What the what? Windows 8.1 update, first look. Essential training, Microsoft Excel, or Access. SharePoint Online Essential Training. Now there's a course for you with Gina Corder. Uh, this is a great course. This is you want it. Lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. Welcome to SharePoint Online Essential Training. My name is Ginny Corder. In this course, we will be taking a look at the features of Microsoft SharePoint Online. I'm just going to let that run in the background so we can all learn from uh, Ginny. Watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching. Stream thousands of courses, more than 3,000 now at last count, on demand. Learn when you want at your own pace. The courses uh, are structured so you could, you could watch them from start to finish, or you could watch a little bit here, a little bit there. And because they have full text transcriptions, you can actually jump to the part of the course that has the answer you need. So it's a great reference material, too. You can even download them and watch them on your Android or iOS device. Lynda.com. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new. Lynda.com slash Windows. Sign up for your free 10-day trial today. Lynda.com slash Windows. We thank them so much for their support. Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley are here. We're talking about Windows, and of course, as we get closer to the day, and I'm I'm just fascinated to hear, because I got the impression that it wasn't going to be in July from last time we talked, but now we well, feel fairly confident. I think we felt confident. Microsoft is saying it's just a partner who said it, like right. it's a rumor, but I, I haven't heard anybody I know, sources or otherwise, say it's not All right. end of July. Okay. All right. Let's see. All Microsoft will commit to is summer. Yeah, That's I think they smart. say late summer. Late summer. Well, yeah. see, late end of July is not late summer. That's smack not dab really. in the middle. Yeah, true. In fact, it's early summer because summer doesn't begin until June twentieth. Yeah, I think that's for them worst case scenario. Yeah, I think like, they're smart. Under yeah. promise, over deliver. Isn't that the best way to go? Yep. Not that's not what necessarily they've done the, for years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. That's good to know. Uh, let's talk about what it's going to look like if you're doing the upgrade. Okay. Windows 10 well, upgrade paths. With, we're finally getting a little more. Uh, this yes. is from an a Australian uh, partner blog, so presumably they yeah. got some information. Yeah, Paul, so Richard, Richard Hay found this, who um, works at Paul's old site. Oh, 
I got confused because <laughs> I looked at the website and I thought, wait a minute. Yeah. Oh, You're like, whose site is that? Who's yeah. what? Wait a minute. Why are we pointing to this piece of junk? Yeah. But I'm just happy that they're still promoting Windows 8 secrets over there in the sidebar. <laughs> Good. Yeah. See? They know. They know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Good. Yeah. So an, an Australian partner blog, uh, and a, it, which is a Microsoft blog, posted a list of which versions can upgrade to which versions. And that's something Microsoft didn't tell us when they announced the different versions. We, we asked, but they wouldn't say. So the partner blog said, it, it's pretty predictable what they said. They said, if you're running Windows 8, 8 1 or Windows 7 Home Basic or Home Premium, you're going to go to Windows 10 Home. So now at least we know that's this the official and, and, and yeah, that's, well, we, right. we even speculated that's why they did the SKUs. Yeah. I mean, why have Home exactly. and Pro on a free version? Because you're upgrading yeah. from Home or Pro. Right, yeah. right. And so Windows 8, 8.1 Pro, go to Windows 10 Pro. Right. Also, um, the uh, Windows 7 Professional and Ultimate also to Windows 8, uh, sorry, Windows 10 Pro. Oh, okay, let's uh, get that. Okay, Ultimate goes to Pro. Okay, got it. Ultimate right. goes to Pro. Eight and eight point one Pro go to Pro and sense. Windows Seven Pro to Pro. But Windows so Seven that, Home again, goes. If I to, had Windows with Bing, where would I go? <laughs> right. Yeah, a lot of people are asking so, about that, and I think you're just going to go with whatever home, version you right? have, right? Wouldn't that be is, the but Bing will it be, part? I mean, they haven't it. said anything about there being a Bing version. Right. If there isn't, right. I would say it's going to go home. home. I mean, it's yeah. Bing is a core version. So the Bing right. version was the free version uh, on low end machines, right? The sub nine or, inch. Oh, yeah. yeah, but it's yeah. really not functionally different from the core version. Yeah, it's just yeah. they said they put the name Bing in there. Yeah, yeah. Bing is there just it's an OEM skew that Windows okay. eight with Bing, okay. right? So well, that's you a good as an question. End user don't have to. So if I have an OEM, I mean, almost everybody has an OEM version of Windows. Very few really buy and install Windows on a standalone machine. So. You, it's really not even an issue. You'll just get what you get. Pretty much. You'll like it. And you'll like it. <laughs> yeah. Will there yeah. be an opportunity or a, even a reason to go from home to pro? Sure. Uh, it would be the same yeah. as the you buy reason in way that you do so today. You could buy up. Yeah. I mean, yep. I don't know that this is in a look. I mean, I, um, that's not free, though. No, it's not free. But, you know, in Windows 8.1 today, you can do a an in-place. Right. Update you and actually, when you go to ultimate, okay, so if you want. it's funny because the option for this appears in the start menu, but it does not run. It, it can't find the. Oh, app. you're so, looking at the new version. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes sense that it would be the same. Yeah. Yeah. And I suspect that it will be. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. If you if you have Windows 8.1 one today, there's something in there called actually was it not coming up here? Error called. I don't see it. <laughs> oh, maybe because I have the. I already have the highest end version. Um, but if you have a lower end version of Windows 8.1, you can. I'm sorry, let me bring it back up on this one. Uh, now it's not coming up there either. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just going to walk away from this conversation and say it's probably going to be away. Uh, there'll be a way. You think it'll be in the store or, uh, or it'll be a menu item? You said it's a menu item now? It's, say, it's a standalone app. Um, I assume it will be similar. Yeah. I don't see it now. So okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at anymore. Who does? It really did. It Honestly. really did disappear. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I got it. I'm sorry. Uh, get more features with a new edition of Windows. Okay. Okay. Is the name of it. Okay. So let's see. Why is this not here? Get more features. Ed Bots writing Windows 10 upgrades won't be free for everyone, and then he, oh, this is the this is the this business is about stuff. This is about licensing. It. Yeah, yeah, this is actually consumer stuff he's writing about. Oh. But um, it's more you know it's it's reminding people about things like when you license a version of Windows, the license is attached to the the device, not the person. You know, and, and right. he has some cases about what if you're running in a VM, what if you're a system builder, uh, like what's it going to look like? Um, okay. We're all just trying to piece this stuff together because so far we've heard almost no yep. specifics from Microsoft on this. They've given us the version names and that's about they, it. Remember, they, they promised to talk about this, but it hasn't really they will. happened Well, yet. we got yeah. time. But I, but I actually... Talk, uh, there was a talk at WinHack uh, in, in March, right in China, that was about yep. this topic, but it was aimed at hardware makers. Right. So it right. was. You, there was yep. some info we could glean and there's some stuff later on that we got for phone that came from that, but... 
Yeah. It's not the full story, and it's certainly not what yeah. consumers need to hear because there's just a lot of missing information there. Yeah. Yeah, because so for instance, I bought a retail 8.1 for yep. my, uh, I use it in virtualization on my Mac at home. Right. That would be upgradable, obviously. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I would get, a, I could get an ISO. I mean, I had a, a CD, a DVD. I mean, what happens? Well, I mean, I don't know. What you can get, we don't know. See, that's right. the thing. Right. That we right. don't know what they're going to supply. Come to uh, think of it, I, I have my, a Windows 7 my, DVD. I have a Windows 7 Ultimate DVD somewhere. So, well, so it's, it, you know, the upgrade doesn't apply to the, DVD, right? It doesn't go. It goes with the machine on which you install it, right? That's that's how product keys are. But well, for instance, it's Windows Seven. I, it's uh, that's long past. I haven't installed. I installed an old an old machine mm -hmm. that I no longer have. So now what? Reinstall it? Yeah, I mean you could. I mean, it, I, and you, but yes, that serial it's, number it's will be retail, no good, right? We don't know how they're going to make it. This is the thing. We just don't know. I mean, I, we can sit here and kind of speculate. Right. Um, okay. So the answer is, I don't know. You like know. you said earlier, most people get Windows with a new computer. Right. So those are pretty straightforward. It's, uh, it's those of us who didn't. It gets applied to that computer. Yeah. Um, you know, if you bought like an OEM version of Windows, which is software that you can buy right. on Amazon, Newegg or whatever, um, that license is not transferable. And so you mm -hmm. could not take that and, and you install it on one computer and then later say, hey, I want to install this other computer. Right. Couldn't do it. Yeah. If you the retail version of Windows you're talking about, actually you could do it. You'd have I to can. probably do I'll a phone activation, but they yeah. would allow it because it's a retail right. version of Windows. Yeah, I mean I have it. I have you know the physical thing. This is why there are books, Leo. This yeah. stuff is complicated. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to talk about off the top of your head because it, it, it is doubly hard here because we don't actually know how they're going to deliver right. this stuff to people and transfer this license to you. Not really you, but to the machine, but. Yeah. Uh, we just don't know yet. And then this is the wellspring of our community. The issue, of course, would come up if you had Windows 7 or 8 installed on one machine and then tried to use that license on a different machine. But they would know because yeah. there's still activation and all that, right? Yeah. So they would know because they see all. They see all. <laughs> so somebody's you know saying all. the retail version is is can be transferred to another machine. You just can't have it on more than one machine at a time. So right. that makes mm -hmm. sense. So I could yeah. just, I, that's good, actually. Yeah. Yep. Because yeah, I, I don't know what happened to that old machine. It may, yeah. I mean, it's been retired. But that said, uh, the chances are good that the machine you're transferring it from and the machine you're transferring it to both already qualify for the Windows 10 free upgrade. Right. right? That's I a mean, good the point. chances are really good. That's a good point. Right. We're kind of splitting hairs a little bit here because oh, that's a good point. over something that yeah. may not matter. Right. Right. Yeah. But we don't know. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, again. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know. I don't want to promise anyone anything, right? I mean, I, I, no. I am nervous of the future conversation that begins but you said yeah you know, so I, no I, no it's guarantees important to qualify here. everything we're talking about here because there are many important details yeah that we just right. don't have no right. guarantees right yeah. and then you know because people continue to ask about this um a lot of people are asking still about windows rt and can can yeah. you upgrade to some version of windows 10 from that the answer is no <clears throat> they've said no yeah. And you're going to get some sort of an upgrade, uh, but it's going to be a subset of Windows 10 features, and we don't know which ones, and we don't know when. So just repeating that for people who haven't heard that yet. Yeah. yeah. Some RT okay. update, but not a Windows 10. Yeah. RT's dead. Gone. If, can yeah. I make a prediction now? Because I know how people think and how they behave on Twitter. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. <laughs> what's going to happen? They're going to release this RT update, yeah. and it's they're going to... They may be stupid enough to call it something like Windows RT 8.2 or something. Let's just pretend that's what it's called. <laughs> okay. And you have to imagine it's going to have some subset of Windows 8 features. Oh, sorry, Windows 10 features, like Mary Jo said, and that that subset may include things like the new Start menu that can be a Start screen or Start menu. And you know, it's probably not going to have Edge because it wouldn't make sense to put the work into that. But you know, maybe it has the new File Explorer, that kind of stuff. Yeah. When they release this thing. We're going to hear complaints from people who have normal Windows computers yeah. who are going to say, how come I can't get that update? That's all I want. I don't oh. want Windows 10. I want that thing. Mm. I just want to predict that that's going to happen. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 We know that. <laughs> yeah, I just, yep. you know, I know it's obvious. But In a world where Twitter exists, virtually all, yeah. if it's possible, it will happen. <laughs> yeah. Right. All. I mean, it's like you really have to, you, you have to think through what will the people complain about? Right. For this. And it's it's right. every time it's something. All possible universes exist on Twitter. 
<laughs> yep. Yep. Yes, they do. <laughs> Stephen Hawking would be proud. <laughs> sure. All right. So, Windows as a Service. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm going to be sorry I started this one. You are. <laughs> but I'm going to try to make this simple. Okay. <laughs> what happened? Should I get some popcorn or something? Because yeah. this isn't yeah, maybe. Um, so, in addition to having these versions of Windows 10, there are also things called branches, right? And the branches tell you um, kind of how you're going to be able to patch and update your version of Windows. Is it already bad? No, <laughs> just, just the first <laughs> sentence alone. Okay, okay. go on. <laughs> All right. There is, a, there is a monster that lives in a cave. <laughs> if, I had, this monster, if I just had a pen and a giant me. surface hub, I could oh, diagram you could, this. You could illustrate this. Okay. Okay. Okay, but envision... A, like a table or a chart. Okay. On the left, I'm you've got your Windows versions. Windows oh. 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro, Windows 10 Enterprise, Windows 10 for Education. Then you have these things called branches that say, you know, when and how you're going to get patches, new features, security updates. There's a thing called the current branch, current branch for business, and long-term servicing branch. So there's three of those, and there's four of those. Envision a giant chart. Like a matrix. <laughs> I'm making it worse. Exactly like a matrix. <laughs> um, the things, I'll, I'll just tell you the things you need to know. If you are a business and you want to be on a branch that lets you never take any new features for Windows 10, like never, you want the long-term servicing branch. The We think the only version of Windows that's going to be allowed to get the long-term servicing branch is Windows 10 for enterprise. So that's only for businesses. Everybody else, no matter what's, what SKU you're running, you're going to have to take these updates that Microsoft rolls out, features, hot fixes, and security updates. You're going to have to take them all at some point. Um, if you're on the current branch, you have to take them right away. You can't delay. So that's people who are like Windows 10 Home, Windows 10 Pro. You know, you're gonna when Microsoft rolls this out, you're going to take these and you're going to like Individuals. them. <laughs> You're gonna like it, <laughs> and if you don't like them, too bad. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard not to hear that end of the sentence when you say, "When you will take it, <laughs> you will, you will, and you will like it." Exactly. Um, but if you are when anybody who can get what's called current branch for business, so that's some Windows 10 Pro, all Windows 10 Enterprise, all Windows 10 for Education. If you have the rights to that branch. You're going to have the option to delay taking the new features for a set period of time. We don't know what the set period is. It might be a month. Might, it's not going to be a long window. Microsoft's goal is to get everybody on the same version of Windows 10 instead of having some people hold back security updates, some people not take certain new features. Because that way you don't know, like you have to patch all these different um, scenarios where everybody's not at the same point. Their goal is let's get everybody to the extent possible on the same version with all the same updates, all the same security fixes and all the same features. I know it sounds really complicated and I'm actually trying to make it simple, but it, just, it just know so. that <laughs> if you, if you're, if you're a business customer and you want never to take a new feature, you're going to have to be on windows 10 enterprise. You cannot be on any other version. Interesting. <laughs> if you, I just want to clarify, not clarify, but make sure I understood what you just said. Um, the only way, to forever put off yep. updates? Yep. Is or at least for 10 years, probably, right? Okay. <laughs> for, is, which okay. is like... Uh, so, so the enterprise version of Windows, yep. 10. Yep. And then I guess that would be applied by some kind of corporate policy, right. depending on how you were yep. managing computers. Okay. Okay. And that version, Windows 10 for enterprise, is not free. That is one that you can't get for free. Um, so in other words, if you, you're you going to have to pay for that if you want that right to delay that forever. Oh, you'll pay. Oh, you'll, oh, you will. And, and just to you'll re take it and you'll like it and oh, will you pay. <laughs> just to reiterate, now, you said this and you've said it before, but just to, uh, for yeah. everybody else, we'll be getting automatic forced pushed updates. Just well, yes. There's a, but there's an interim too, right? In other words, there is. what did you call? What's the the name of the Current branch for uh, business? Is the interim okay? Is the interim piece, and that allows managed businesses of any size to delay updates for some amount of time. Some period of time. And, and actually, have they specified that period of time? Nope, they have not. 
Um, I've heard some people say it it might be as short as one month, but I, I have not seen anything that says how long that is. And then the other question is, <clears throat> and the, oh, sorry, and the way they're going to enforce that, this is kind of diabolical on their part. You can see- <laughs> It has to be. Rubbing their hands <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. I'm so, listening. How do, you, how do you make sure a business is going to do it? You say to them, we'll let you delay your, your uh, new features and updates for a month, say. But if you don't apply them at some point, we're going to not give you any more security fixes for that version. Ah, uh, yikes. Yep, that's what they're going to do, I hear. So that's the way to enforce that policy. Yeah, that makes you, sense. You need the security fixes, so you better yeah. update. Yeah. Yep. So I guess what they're trying to do is an end run around someone who might be using a third party system management solution of some kind where the whole thing's back. Yep. Yeah. Mm. All right. Yep. Huh. Huh. And what is the uh, Windows update for business? The lowest end SKU that can get that is it just Pro? Pro. Yep. Pro. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm makes sorry sense. it wasn't too simple, but <laughs> no. And in fact, sense. what's a shame is that I think this this people hear this and they get a little nervous. But yep. but this yep. shouldn't make you nervous because if you're an IT professional in an enterprise situation, this you know this stuff, right? This is all. This is why you're an IT professional. Technically, though, I mean, uh, any business today could, I believe, hold back any update they wanted to. You can't Today, forever. it's well, yeah, it's good, but that's the yeah. point. It's different. It's going to be different under ten. I mean, that's different. Yeah, yeah, that's changing. Um, and they, you know, they, they've started to try to wean people away from that hold it back forever with Windows eight point one and with um, Windows Server twenty twelve R two. They've started putting some things in place that make that less likely that you're going to hold back forever. But yeah. um, they're trying to teach. They're trying to teach IT pros new behavior. Basically, like yeah, so many IT sure. pros, the way they've always done this is we're going to hold this till we decide we're ready or where some things we're never going to patch or some things we're never going to give um, any new features. And so they're they're trying to kind of wean people away. <laughs> it's sort from of how the way. carriers treat Windows Phone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, pretty much, except not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, right. At all. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. I find this to be very, very confusing. It's kind of diabolical, though, isn't it? Yeah. It's, well, I... Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I understand why they're doing it. There are actually good reasons that they're doing this, which is... And they made this case, by the way, at Ignite. They said, because everybody's holding back different patches and some people are applying optional updates, some aren't. When we right. patch something, it's going to break some things because everybody's not on the same version and we can't wow. test for so every now, okay, so... Right. They're sort of blaming everyone else for the problems nah. of dating. And they admit they, <laughs> it, they've they been, no, nah, just, I think just like other Microsoft products that in the past, they've allowed people and enabled people to do things a certain way. They're saying, we need to teach you the new way right. to do this. And we're part of this too. We, they have to learn that way too, right? For them, for themselves inside. I think the, the crux of this is going to be what time period of business on, let's say Windows Update for Business or yep. uh, WSUS or whatever. Yep. Is going to be able to push uh, back an update. W sauce, uh, W uh, Windows yeah, Server Windows Server Update Services. services. Uh, w kind of like an on on prem. Yeah, yeah, it's basically an on prem yeah. filter between Windows Update and their users, and yeah. it lets. We've them, talked about this before, but I just yeah. I want to yeah. make sure people understand. Yep, that's my job here. I'm the what? acronym detector. W sus. What W sus? <laughs> so okay, so I now have installed my ISO. I'm running Windows 10, but that's the old version. And and how will I get the new one? Just it'll. Happen. Oh, so click Advanced Options. Okay. Uh, where would that be? Oh, here. No. In where? the middle. No, in the, right in the middle. In the middle. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, right down at the bottom where it says Choose How Preview Builds. Ah, uh, preview choose builds are fast. on, and I want to get to fast. I was on slow ring. Now go back. There's a back button. Feels like top. that should be a, a Creedence Clearwater revival song. <laughs> Come on and get the slow ring. <laughs> so once this uh, important malicious software removal, yeah, this tool is just us. yeah, this is just updates because it's a new install, so it's getting yeah. So once you uh, do this update, it'll you do the check rest. for updates again. You should see FBL awesome whatever the build number is. Oh, excited. <laughs> I really actually have to say I like Windows 10 so much better than eight. 
I feel really good. I like okay. it, but you know, there, there was a picture circulating on uh, Twitter today, and I don't normally, I'm not into these kind of user created mock up things. Yeah. But the big complaint I have about Windows 10 on the desktop from sort of a user experience update, you can see it in your screen there. That settings window is very dull and there's no contrast. Like, yeah. I don't understand why that top bar isn't yeah. the same color as your accent color, yeah. like the color you see on the. Uh, yeah, you're task right. Mark, it's sorry. gray. Yeah. 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 And, and just that. Yeah, like bring up the I don't know. Pretty. So bring up if you bring up not in this build it doesn't change. If you bring up the file explorer pretty. window, for okay, example, yeah. the yellow uh, folder at the bottom yeah, there. I, I know um, what that is. When that window opens, <laughs> it is it's, it's gray just, too. Yeah. It's yeah, gray. It's I mean, the icons are bright, you know, that are inside. They might it. change that window. though. You're right. I think they will. Yeah. yeah. You I know it'd be so. great. Let's make it translucent. You could kind of make it, I don't know, I we call it arrow. I like it. Like a glass effect, you mean. Glassy kind of. You heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. they so could use awesome. the GPU to render it. It would I'd actually save battery life. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the the icons are it. indeed colorful. <laughs> they, they are, are indeed. Well, they might be a little too colorful. I mean, compared to the rest <laughs> of it. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the idea. Is that uh, this way you can't miss them? <laughs> yes. You can't. And I like this. I like this pinning them. feature. I think that's kind of cool. Of course, it yeah. doesn't do anything. It's just. Well, no, that indicates it is pinned. No, it um, is pinned. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very happy as we, as we, uh, I for one. Yep. I think, I'm, you know, the desktop stuff is pretty, is pretty much there. I, yeah. There are questions still about usability on tablets. Uh, and of course the phone thing is yeah. the laughing stock right yeah. now. But, like, but our advice is don't, don't mess with your phone yet. Just wait. Yeah, I always yeah. use the Jerry Purnell thing. Remember his line was, um, you know, I make these mistakes so you, so don't, you don't have, have to. to exactly. um, I just make these mistakes. I'm an idiot. Right. And uh, you should follow my lead and, and not make those mistakes. Paul, I'm going to give you uh, an award. It's a Cortana lunchbox. Oh, I have one of those already. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, okay. oh man. Those Did you get a, like a Lumia 635 inside yeah, I, of that? Yeah, there was a phone in it. Yeah. yeah. It says, hi, I'm Cortana. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Isn't that cute? That is cute? I bring that when I go to work. Yeah, my, my lunch <laughs> you go across as you go across the yard. Yeah. You carry your little yeah. lunch pail. Hi ho, hi ho! <laughs> it's Windows 10. I go. <laughs> yep. Uh, now it's in downloading FBL Impressive. Yeah, that's it. FBL Impressive. Impressive. What did I say? FBL Awesome. Or something. Awesome. Impressive. Awesome. Whatever. It's Whatever. Some... It's gonna go nicely with my Cortana lunchbox. That's all I know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mm -mm. Yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll keep uh, Windows 10 off my Lumia 1520 and put it on that, what was it, a 630 or whatever they sent. I, I had it on the 1520 and it was just I can't awful. I can't sacrifice. Yeah. I can't sacrifice my 1520 to that. I'm sorry. Yeah, don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. Moving along. Um, th you know, so free for a year... Yeah, mm -hmm. we got to talk about this. A lot of people... <laughs> yes, <laughs> let's talk. Yeah, well, Microsoft didn't really explain what they meant. I chose to interpret I, that as, hurry up, download Windows 10. We want everybody to be uh, upgraded as quickly as possible. And then mm -hmm. after a year, we're going to say, yeah, okay, it's still free forever. No. Maybe. No. Yeah. Well... Oh, well, I mean, no. I suppose that could happen, too. But you know what? Remember when Windows 8 launched, it was $30, $40 for an upgrade yeah. for a limited time. And everyone yeah. thought... They're going to keep it that way. They have to, and they didn't. Yeah, and yeah, that was a shocker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's too bad. Yeah. So when when Microsoft did announce that free for a year deal back in January, mm -hmm. they said if you're on Windows 8.1, Windows 7 Service Pack One, or Windows Phone 8.1, you can upgrade to Windows 10 for free um, for the first year that the operating system is available. So my assumption was what yours was leo it's like and after that yeah. you probably will pay yeah, right yeah but i so guess by the way, my, my, that was not it, my assumption it wasn't uh, that was mine no. oh, oh, oh i'm sorry i'm sorry uh let's say you have received the free update yeah so now it's a year later you're not paying for it then no, no. you're not no no so that's right. the part okay, everybody sorry. get confused about this yeah a lot of because, people got confused in that right there were stories it, it's hard out to saying, word this clearly it really is so if yeah. If you are somebody who takes that one year free deal and you get Windows 10 sometime between July 2015 and July 2016, let's say if it launches in July, 
after that, if you have it for free, you're going to keep getting updates for free. Yes. You're not suddenly going to start paying for updates Great. next July. That's not what this means. Good. It means it doesn't if you move into like limited to free, usability right. mode or something. No, no, it's not that. You got if, it. If you're you, you're a full fledged right. member of the Windows you're community. In. You're, you're in. You're in the club. Yep. And, and you're in for the lifetime, didn't. the support lifetime of you that are. machine, the device, something. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, they say the hardware, but right. Yeah. But yeah. if you didn't take the deal, like say you decide, you know what, I'm not ready to do this yet. I don't want that first year deal. Mm -hmm. And then say next September, September 2016, you go, you know what? Now I want to go to Windows 10. It, no, unless it. Microsoft extends the free one-year deal, you're going to have to pay something to get it. Well, who was confused about that? Oh, man, everybody. I've, I've gotten really? so many questions and queries because a lot of people thought this meant after the first year, you were going to start paying for upgrades. That's not what it Well, means. yeah, that, that I understand. But, you right. know, someone who decided all along not to upgrade, and now it's 15 yeah. months later. And, right. you know what, I think I do want to upgrade to Windows 10. I mean, I, I, did people really think deal. that... I guess they thought it was going to be like, yeah, they did it this year, but they're going to just extend it indefinitely. And I, they did. Oh, geez, wow. They may. Okay. They may. We don't know, right? But well, we can't see the future, yeah. sure. But I feel like. I, so why give it away for a year and then start charging for it? They're not going to do well, that. They just well, they won't. Why? Why only for one year? You mean? No. Yeah. Why yeah. would you do that? To rush everybody to upgrade. To print. And that's why they're saying that. I, I, but imagine be the calculated. upset the day after when all of a sudden it's $159 or whatever. No, but who, who are those people that 366 days later or whatever suddenly are suddenly, saying, I I, 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 wow, well, now I really want to do it. What do you mean they canceled the deal? <laughs> I mean, I, what, what is this audience? I don't understand. Uh, like, well, people aren't yeah. paying attention. You see, we pay attention, you and I. But people yeah. who don't pay attention deserve to be punished. <laughs> 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 Therein lies the problem. It's that well, mindset, no. I think. <laughs> There's also, uh, so I'll make another case of people who might delay yep. business users who want pro, right? Say you're business a business user. Yeah, because they don't, because they don't want to be, but, and don't want force updates. You don't uh, say, okay, say you're, say you're on Windows 7 uh, Pro yeah. or Windows 8.1 Pro yeah. right now. Yeah. You're a business customer. Yeah. And Microsoft comes out with Windows 10. You're like, you know what? I'm going to let people kick the tires for a bit right. and see how this goes. I'm not ready to upgrade. No. And Or your company says, you can't upgrade for right. two years. Yeah. Right. By the way, that will be a lot of companies. That's very so, common. That will be. That's the probably the default position. Well, but companies. but if the plan, it, it, look, so first of all, this is a non-enterprise, right? So this is a smaller business. Right. It's my business. Small business. It's my business. Right. Uh, your business. Yeah. And, you know, maybe that's your attitude. I don't want to do this right away. Let's, right. but you're not, you know. Yeah. Six months, right? I mean, it's how long are you going to wait? Longer. Well, you're not going to wait a year because right. it's not free not after a year, free. right? That's I mean, why unless I think, they extend the deal, right? which I think well, they will, like, but again, they ain't going to say anything until that. then, right? Right. If your if your plan is to assume they're going to change their policy, <laughs> I mean, like <laughs> this is just flawed. I know. You know? It's not. Maybe they point. will. Maybe I they will. Know. But I don't. But the idea, on that. Microsoft's idea, is let's get as many people to upgrade to Windows 10 as soon as we yeah. can. Right? That's the game plan. I'm a so the way you man. do that, make it free. I'm a <laughs> for gambling one year. man. I'm gonna wait. Actually, I don't know what we're gonna do. You know, it's not really up to me. Our IT guy Russell. Yeah. Will, I don't know what his position will be on this. If it were, I yeah. mean, frankly, I would want to upgrade to 10 if I were out there. If I were sure. one of the little people. Yeah, but the, the, that's what the IT... The IT is the man to the little people. No, Their he, job is to say yeah, no. Yeah, that's his job, yeah. <laughs> Here's and, another group of people that might delay. Rich Woods is saying on Twitter, you know the people who want the placeholder replacement on OneDrive <laughs> and who are going to stay with oh, Windows 8? Boy. Yep, oh. there's a group of people. Those, that group exists, yeah. and those people also I, well, won't put be rushing. Well, put feature that's X actually here. That's fairly feature, reasonable, feature, You know, I love the charms bar. I mean, there's got to be... There's any given feature... That yep. They don't want to give up. You know, who I guess will what not I'm saying is, is our uh, uh, editors won't. We because we those machines. We have to make sure that Premiere works as right, expected. Right. Um, right. So there has to be some kind of testing that occurs right. to make sure it's okay. Right. But if you're relying on whatever, I mean, I, I get it. I get waiting, but you know, wait ten or eleven months. Don't. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we and they're right. using Windows eight one. By the way, they're not using Windows seven. I, by the way, yeah. the question too. Our, I mean, what if? We should know the price, right? So, in other words, there's all kinds of things that could happen. But let's just say within the first month of 
RTM slash GA, we're going to know what the upgrade cost is. Right. Um, yeah. What if it's 40 bucks? Oh, then it's no big deal. Right? Then, then who cares? Just right. wait. If it's under $100, $200, bucks, then, right. then we have a problem. Right, exactly. Um, the other thing is, since we're speculating, what the hell, it's fun. You know, yeah. Microsoft might, uh, at that expiration of the one year, say, okay, so now it's not free. The year is expired, but now we have a special deal. Right. The uh, upgrades are going to be half price for the next year or something. Maybe they go up in price over time. The longer you wait, the more you pay. I don't know. All kinds of things that could happen. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Honestly, that OneDrive thing you just said was probably the best excuse I've heard so far. Yeah. I, the, even yeah. the TriCaster says the same. Our, <laughs> he yeah. tweeted. Waving hand. I'm one of those people yeah. who's going to wait. <laughs> TriCaster. Well, we never gets upgraded. It was running Windows XP till recently. Yeah. So. Yeah. So there you go. There are people who need to wait or want to wait or are being forced to wait. And for those so, yeah. people, we salute you. <laughs> You're not hasty right. decision makers. Right. And the piracy thing, I think we now know. You have that we've always done. But. We've always known. It's not. Yeah, it's nothing not has not changed. There's no amnesty program. This is not. Nope. Nothing has changed. Come in. From your, uh... the only thing they said in that post, though, I will say there was one bit. I, cause I, I lit, I kind of printed the whole thing out, not on paper, but, and then kind of commented on each section. And each time it was like, yep, we already knew that. Yep, already knew that. Yep, already knew that. And then there was this line. It said, in partnership with some of our value, valued OEM partners, by which they mean PC makers, yeah. we're planning very attractive Windows 10 upgrade offers for their customers Ooh. running one of their older devices in a non-genuine state. Stay tuned to learn more from our partners on the specifics of their offers. So that sounds like the Lenovo's, HP's, Dell's of the world are going to reach out to customers of theirs who are running their hardware but have a non-genuine version of Windows on there, and they're going to offer some kind of a special deal to get Windows 10 genuine version, which sounds like something's new, something new. Thing is, they actually already offer this, by the way. Um, Microsoft sells something to their partners called the Get Genuine Kit. Uh, and I would assume that this thing that they're talking about is, in fact, just a Windows 10 version of that. So it may just be a new version of something that already exists. Um, but that's potentially new information. <laughs> like that. Potentially new information. <laughs> Listen, I would love to have an answer to every question. But that's but the I am show. Literally, that's your I, I job. think I am literally being as precise as I can yeah. be. No, you are. That's you all know? we ask. We do not ask more precision than you are. The fact that of. me, the, as precise as I can be, is humorous, is because we, <laughs> we you know, we cover Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just, you know. Now, this but, was yeah. the one I thought was very interesting, and I really wanted to get your take on it. We talked about it on Twitter yep. on Sunday, which is uh, Microsoft basically saying, I think it was a blog mm -hmm. post. We are going to make sure all Windows phones are up to date. Uh, then that's our job. We're going to update those. We don't. We're going to go around the carriers. Yeah, they, they, they didn't really. I'm not really sure they say that. They implied it, I guess. But here's the thing: um, something magic hasn't happened where the carriers get caught out of the picture. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, it's not like that Microsoft has a lot of leverage. When that's what I mean. So, I mean, I, we all want to believe this is true. And that's how it is on the iPhone. The phone 7 came out. But, uh, but Steve Jobs negotiated stiff terms when the iPhone came out, and, and those terms yeah. have been presented. Well, by the way, after being rejected by other carriers, finally Singular said yes to everything right. that he demanded. Right. The iPhone took off eventually, and now he sets, or Apple, sets the terms. There's no going back. You know, Apple's the only company that gets that deal. But um, why would, the, okay, so... Uh, certainly on Android, the carry there's there's carrier specific stuff on every Android phone. There's yep. manufacturer specific stuff on every Android phone. So yep. when Android is updated, the first the manufacturers and then the carriers have to do soak tests and update and blah blah blah. And often they don't even bother updating. And that's one of the reasons. For I Android have a Samsung Galaxy S5 that was brand new, yeah. to, but a year ago. Yeah, it is not on Android 5. Point anything. No, in fact, it's most the only smart. version of this phone that is not. Yeah. If you have this on Verizon or T-Mobile or whatever, you got yeah. that update. Yeah. I did not get it. I'm on AT&T. <laughs> if you have a Note 4, Why? you're hoping it, you didn't get the update because it broke them. But that's another matter. <laughs> okay. But, you know, the, great. So that's just the way this goes. And yeah. so... Um, it, but it, but the Lumia is... Uh, well, maybe they mean Lumia. 
Doesn't matter if it's a Lumia. Unless Microsoft sells it to you directly, sans contract, unlocked. Right. They can't bypass the carriers to deliver these kinds of updates. The day, but but uh, why? Can't they just push the data down? I mean... Why is it? Why do the carriers have to get involved? I see if it, if it went over carriers' networks. Because the carrier is the one that has the agreement with Microsoft to sell that device. Ah, and part of that agreement is they get to call the shots because they don't want certain things on the network. It doesn't matter if this makes sense, by the way. I want to be really clear. It doesn't matter if what <laughs> the no carriers want. There's no technical. Makes, there's no technical reason for it. There's <laughs> absolutely no technical reason yeah. because a lot of people will say, "Well, I mean, why not just let it go over Wi-Fi?" To which I would say, "Absolutely, why not?" Right, because carriers. That's why not. <laughs> and I, so in, we'll, I, yeah. I, you know, okay. we'll see. I just, I don't understand in this day and age. I've said this a million times. I think every single day on any phone, I don't care what kind of phone you have, Windows Phone, Android, iOS, you're updating tens, hundreds of megabytes, possibly more, of app updates every single day. Yeah. You can do that over your cellular network. You can do it over Wi-Fi. For some reason, no one has a problem with this. These apps could do, they're sandboxed, I get it. But as far as like them consuming data and doing stuff over cellular, they have those permissions. They could abuse the network in various ways. There's no one has ever tried to stop this from happening. Yeah. But Microsoft wants to ship a security update for Windows Phone or a, a functional update to a CoreOS component. And suddenly that's, that, that's a problem. And I don't understand it. I, I completely agree and understand why people are disgruntled over this. And I... What can I tell you? All I know is these companies supposedly test these updates. Microsoft has provided them with a lot of data. I think the plan going forward is to provide them with uh, Windows Insider users who are using that app to update early and saying, look, it went out to X number of users. No one's had any problems on all of the devices that are on your network. Please release the update. And I'm telling you, they have never done anything that they've said they were going to do, and they've never done the right thing. So I don't understand why we think they're going to change now. I feel like a broken record. This yeah. is me from 2010. I had this yeah. argument with Microsoft. And they never, and it's never happened before. You were right. I never, uh, you've been right all along. I, that, it's never. It's the goal, right? I, I think that's the thing. Microsoft, <laughs> like, this is like. Inner the peace is a goal. I mean, I don't, <laughs> you know. Is, right. Sure. Making that announcement. And they, I mean, am I wrong? Did I misread it? I it felt they like they made that announcement. No. What they said. In, in it, January, that he said. Uh, it would have been Terry Myerson would have said something to this effect on stage because we asked them about it, remember, when we were yeah. heading over to do Windows Weekly. Right. And they said to us that they have a plan and that they will reveal more information later. I think the insinuation then, was a build. Then at Ignite, actually, when they announced Windows Update for Business, in that, in that blog post they said, Microsoft's new continuous update policy will apply to all devices, yes. including phones. That's including the phones. one it, I'm talking about. But... They never said yeah, but how, you know what? like how, here, how here, is it going to work? If you have bought a phone, let's just use AT&T, the punching bag of the moment. If your company has is using AT&T and you've deployed Lumia's, whatever they are, uh, to your workforce for some reason, that the company doesn't exist, but let's just pretend what a perfect world that would be. Um, Microsoft is delivering updates through Windows Update, through Windows Update for Business, it doesn't matter, for a phone. I still think that the carrier isn't going to be in the end of that chain. Microsoft will have come through on their end of the agreement. Windows Insiders will get it because they have that app on their phone. Um, and I don't think they're gonna be able to ship it to those phones out in the general populace. I really don't, unless the, I think the carrier is still the final lock on the on the last door. I mean, the way, the way they can say they're doing this is to do it through Insider, right? Windows Insider program. They could push yes. it to people in Insider program and say, see, we're not being hamstrung by the carriers. We're giving it right to you. But that that's, as far as I understand, that's a preview release at that point. It's not a final, right? Aren't there also questions about whether that breaks the warranty on your phone? Yeah. There are questions about that. At, at um, WinHack China, Microsoft talked about this thing called Project <coughs> Milky Way. That um, yep. The goal, it, it, it was a slide to OEMs and it said, our goal is to delight users by keeping their mobile devices updated to the latest release within four to six weeks of when we release a feature. So they had a whole plan for how to do this. But even that plan seems to uh, imply that somehow carriers are going to be part of that. By uh, the way, it, it doesn't just imply it. There's a slide that shows it. <laughs> There's a green the, box. The one that says val validate OTA updates. Right. Those green boxes, the, the green means not Microsoft partners. 
And partners aren't just hardware makers. Partners are also the carriers. Right. Validate over-the-air updates on retail phones. It does. In other words, it's not getting pushed to the production server until that right. step happens, and that's where the uh, oh, uh, the uh, wireless carrier gets in the way. Right. I don't think anything's so, changed. I really, don't, I, like, I really don't think anything's changed. I think I, they. Just like before, they would love to have this happen. They'd love to be able to go around yep. the carriers because the carriers have just been holding all of us hostage with these updates and they know it and we know it. And the, the goal is to get everybody on the same most up-to-date release. But as long as the carrier is in that it's, diagram. It, it, the the carrier know. business model does not coincide with what is best for us as users and what is best for Microsoft as the maker of the platform. You said a mouthful there, yeah. yeah. Right, I mean- what they what they want is for you to be unhappy that your phone is not being updated, so you get a new phone. <laughs> right. Right. If you go to them, they'll say, "Here, here's an idea." Uh, to use, um, you know, AT and T yeah. again, we have this program called Next, and uh, using Next, you could tack a little bit of extra money onto your plan every month, and you can get a new phone every year or whatever the time frame is. It's probably a few choices. Um, so don't worry about getting updates on your Lumia, whatever, because. After one year, you can move along to a Lumia something else. You can move along to an iPhone, which, by the way, gets updates all the time, mm. or an Android device, and you can take your chances there as well. And they're making money when they do that. And that's yep. their okay. interests being pushed forward and our interests being pushed to the you know pushed aside. Yep. So there. That's how, I, I just don't see any reason why it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then to kind of close the loop on this, when Beta went back to Microsoft, when, when these reports through Edbot and other people came out saying, you know, Microsoft's going to cut the cut the um, delay out. They, they said Microsoft said to Win Beta, we will continue to work closely with mobile operators on testing to meet and exceed quality bars. So they're they're saying they're still in the picture. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have to be. Mm -hmm. um, and if they are, I don't see what Microsoft can do to stop the so delay. Here's one thing they could do. They could sell phones directly right. through the Microsoft Store, yeah. the drone right. blocked. You know, yeah. this hasn't been a gangbuster business for Google. You know, they do that with yeah. the Nexus line of phones or whatever. Yeah. But this is, they could at least say, you know, and by the way, they already, they sort of do this with PCs, signature PCs and Surface is sort of the PC analog to this, right? Mm -hmm. Here are the phones. Yeah. You got them from us. There's no crapper on them. It doesn't matter when this one, you can get rid of crapper, but uh, you're not locked to a carrier. And if they're smart, they'll make these things with multiple, you know, uh, radios so they work everywhere. One phone, not multiple phones. The, the Windows Phone business model right now is such that, at least with Lumia, they basically sell the same phone to different carriers. Yeah. And it's like these little mini exclusives. They change the the model number a little bit. They Sometimes yeah. it's dual SIM, some, some, sometimes it's LTE, sometimes it's LTE with dual SIM. Sometimes it's a different size screen. It's really the same stuff. They change the version number a little bit. They give everyone the little you know, special version of the same thing. And it just creates a whole bunch of different, like slightly different stupid phones all over the place. They could just have a, a, a smaller set of phones, unlocked, no contract, multiple carrier support, bring your own SIM. You know? Mm -hmm. and could the carrier still stop updates that way though? No, they can't. No. no. So right now, if you have an unlocked phone and you're say on AT&T, when Microsoft pushes out an update, you, don't you have to wait until your carrier pushes it to you uh, unless you're on the developer well, program? So we don't actually technically have these types of phones today. Mm -hmm. So if I go to Expansys, right, and I buy yeah. uh, an, un I, and what I'm buying is a phone that was unlocked mm -hmm. from, right. I don't actually know how they get unlocked. We don't really technically have the thing I'm asking for, but that phone's from somewhere, right? Yeah. And so I get that, you get the update from based on whatever, wherever it's from, you know, so for, mm -hmm. uh, for the 930 here that I just borked, that was a Thailand-based phone. It's not associated with a particular carrier in Thailand, right. but it is a Thailand-based phone. When Thailand got the Lumia denim yeah. update, right. I got gotcha. it on that right. phone. Yeah. Same thing for okay. me. I had my 1520s from uh, yeah. Singapore, I think. Yeah. 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 So you, I think I remember. Yeah. We're Latin America. No, it was Latin America, and, and now I don't know where the hell it's from. But when you first got it, that update wasn't available. No. And then at some right. point, it, they shipped it to right. Latin America. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. get you Whatever now. schedule yeah. they have. So, I, I and this mean, doesn't mean this doesn't include like bug fixes and errors and stuff. They're going to fix those. Should right? include everything. I mean, everything. Uh, yeah. you know, supposedly, uh, you know, there aren't any real inst like there are certainly no big public instances of this. But if Microsoft were to discover a zero day attack that was effective on Windows Phone, 
presumably they could go to the carriers and say, look, this is some kind of exception. You need to let us push this update out. We know you need to test it, but this is important. It's not about delivering a new calendar or something stupid. It's uh, presumably that's part of their agreement. I, I seem to remember yeah. there being some language to that effect. But I don't actually think that's ever happened, right? I, I What they really need is the ability just to bypass these companies altogether. And I think selling them directly, they have everything in place. They already do it with surfaces. I mean, they aren't the same thing, obviously. There's no wireless carrier in the way. But, you know, you make the phones, you have a store. Hmm. <laughs> you know, yep. just do that. I mean, I guess the problem would be if they ever did that, it's possible that some group of wireless carriers might then come to them and say, well... Congratulations on your new phone venture. We're not going to be selling any more of your phones yeah. directly to oh, consumers. Oh, there's plenty of ways sure. they can screw. Uh, yeah, screw they with can. Them. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, they're good at that. They, That's the one. It's thing probably really good at. it's even just a contractual violation. I mean, you know, you can't yep. just right. sure. You just can't abrogate a contract. You have to honor it. Yeah. Uh, the old days, Microsoft would have done that in a heartbeat. <laughs> we, you know, we're Microsoft. Let's Who not pretend you? we don't miss that a little bit. Verizon, <laughs> AOL. What kind of company is that? Here's what I think of your contract. <laughs> <laughs> you can shower in my contract. I don't know. Yeah. Well, at least I can so get Candy have... Crush Saga. Thank God. Woohoo. What you know what the big uh, unanswered question about Candy Crush Saga is? What is the big unanswered question? <laughs> is there one? No. What is it? <laughs> is this only for Windows 10 on PCs, or is it also for Windows phones? This is the uh, this is the one they showed where it was a, the port from iOS, right? Yep. And how yeah, easy it was point. to do that. But that isn't don't those ports? Well, aren't that was they? on phone though. I mean, this is actually I don't think this app is available yet on. <coughs> oh, I see. Windows 10 for PCs, is it? Uh, this says Candy so. Crush has been written for a Windows Phone, right? Yeah. And then but it I mean, says can't. It says Microsoft will bundle Candy Crush Saga with Windows 10. It doesn't it's say. It's bundled. Bundled. <laughs> I'm so excited. Instead See, of my Can we call it, it, Can we call Some it that? Some people will be. Well, They're not the people who wants Microsoft to bundle Hadoop. I can tell you that. <sighs> not those people. If you search for Candy Crush Saga on the Windows 10 store. <laughs> I know. You get a all lot that of crapola like stuff, it. which is like strategy guide, ultimate cheese. Yeah, so. Right. I don't think it's Axe. out yet. I think that's the point. It's not right. actually out yet. Right. Yep. So in other words, at some point right after the release of Windows 10, you're going to, yep. I mean, I can only imagine, it, it, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to deliver it, either in Windows Update, which would be infuriating, or maybe it'll just be like an auto update through the store or something. I have no idea. Maybe it could The good be news is the it's RTM. universal app. You can get rid of it. It could be on the RTM. Why not? I don't, if you it's read the actual announcement, times. I don't believe that it is in Windows. It, it, it They describe how you get Windows 10 and then it appears on your computer. It's I a think sign it's of the times. Instead downloaded. of Spider Solitaire and Minesweeper, we'll get Candy Crush Saga and, I don't know, Angry Birds. You got to figure, you know, Candy Crush Saga is free. So it's not mm -hmm. like it's such a great deal. You could get it in three seconds. I Yes. I would bet it's a profit deal. Me too. That the guys at Candy Crush said, how much would it cost to make oh, sure that Leo. every ship version of Windows I, ships with us? Uh, let, me, let me give you my imagined story of how this happened, and you will agree immediately that this is almost certainly what happened. Microsoft went to them and said, hey, we're developing this software that will let you port iOS apps and games to Windows Phone, and we'd like to tr you to try it on Candy Crush Saga. And they said, that's hilarious. <laughs> but... Uh, why would we do that? Nobody uses Windows Phone. Right. And they were like, well... Uh, maybe there's some other way we could come to an agreement. And the agreement was, I have an idea. How about you make this, part, you just give it away to everyone who has Windows 10. Mm -hmm. They probably said something to these guys like, our, our goal is to have Windows 10 go out to a billion people. And they were like, really? Well, yeah. now we can talk. <laughs> you know, how about we give it away to those billion people? I'm pretty right. sure that's what happened. This game is three is over three years old now. According to Edward Snowden, there's an, maybe another reason for putting Candy Crush <laughs> Saga on Windows 10. <laughs> All right. The uh, according to Snowden, Snowden, the NSA uses Candy Crush and Angry Birds. Uh, that's awesome. To leak your location information to the National Security Agency. <laughs> How about that? Oh, God. How about that? Well, they know where I am now. I'm recording a podcast. You can see my house. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> uh, all right. All right. All right. Enough of that. Um, by the way. 
we may actually have that moment where the machine I'm working on reboots. Yes. That would be awesome. <laughs> into Windows 10 update. What does the FBL stand for? An FBL impressive. It's like Flight Build Lab. Oh. Yeah. Underscore impressive is the the flight of builds, I guess. That it's not, run. It's it's not the Facebook library or something. No. No. That would be wrong. No. 64%. Um, gosh, there's so much more. Let's let's not slow down, Leo. Let's keep moving. Windows <laughs> 10 on Raspberry Pi 2. That's well, this one will be quick. How is that? Because there's not much to say. Okay. You basically, you download an image of Windows IoT Core. Uh, you put it onto an SD card in a very particular fashion. Plug it into your Raspberry Pi Boots device. Up. Yeah. Boot the thing off of it. And it boots to a uh, something called default app, which just has a screen that shows you the name of the machine, the IP address. It kind of just lets you know it's <clears> up and running. There's, no, there's desktop, no GUI. There's no, there's no GUI, right? It's yeah. yeah. So the point of this is that what you will do on another machine on your network is get Visual Studio 2015 going. You'll uh, write, create a universal app, and you'll run it to that hardware. And as you you know you build the the project and it will run, and you'll see it on that screen, and then you can do whatever it is you're going to do. I mean, the goal here is not to create a full running Windows environment. These things are going to be typical, typically going to be you know single use type of things. Yeah. Microsoft has all these examples of things like uh, you know weather stations and little kind of goofy sensor type things, and I think that's there's going to be a lot of that. But I, I actually think um, it's it's going to be possible for people to do you know to make like a Roku type device with one of these boards where. You create the interface that runs a couple of different oh, yeah. apps. Or well, something. you can already do it with other operating systems. So it's just, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. There's going to be all kinds of that kind when of stuff. When do we get so. Windows Media Center for Raspberry Pi 2? <laughs> <laughs> just joking. <laughs> I'm just teasing. <laughs> Don't get their hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a teaser. It's uh, that, that wound is still a little sore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's still rumors flying, you know, that there's going to be a Windows Media Center for Xbox One kind of a oh, crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's just called Xbox One. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is a media center. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, touch first office apps for Android phones. They're out. They're out. Preview. Preview. What is do you out. think? Paul, I haven't tried. Oh, is that mine? Uh, so I, I, when you think about all the places that Microsoft has gone with Office on the mobile devices, right? Uh, iPad, I think, was first. iPhone, Android tablets, preview, and then non-preview. Uh, obviously, Windows and Windows Phone are in there in the Windows 10 time frame, and we have preview versions of those. And the last one, the, the missing piece, was Android handsets, uh, mm -hmm. phones. Mm -hmm. And so until yesterday, I think it was, basically what you had was an Office mobile app, which worked like Office Hub and Windows right. Phone, where it was just an Office, one, one app. And you could access uh, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint from within that app. Right. Um, as of now, we have preview versions of the standalone Office apps. And so... Um, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel in standalone form, just like we do on every other platform. So if you're familiar with it on iPhone or on Windows 10 mobile for phones, basically the same set of apps, uh, same set of capabilities, um, plus or minus whatever things are specific to the platforms. Uh, so not a lot to say there, just that they're out now in preview. Hey. Do I have to sign up or do something special to get it, or is it uh, just in the? Is it in the store? You actually have to go to the Google Plus page for uh, the Office. That's what they do, yeah. Which you had to do for the tablet version as yep. well. Uh, and then they'll give you, you join. You done. join a community. Uh, this is actually fairly common. I think this might even be a like on Google. You mean? Um, you go to Google Plus. I just did this for uh, Hyperlapse for uh, Microsoft Hyperlapse. Yeah. You go. It's you so join the Google watching Plus. Watching Microsoft do like the right thing for the platform. <laughs> You know what I mean? They gotta do what they gotta do. What they gotta do to get those. Yeah, the no, store. it's 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 no good for them. I I I don't mean that in a, a jerky way. I mean, I, I it's it's it's. You're it's a nice. jerk. Come on, <laughs> uh, Leo. I know. By the way, hyperlapse <laughs> hyperlapse is awesome on Android. I just want to say hyperlapse. The Microsoft thing. Microsoft yeah. hyperlapse. They're, you know, yep. whatever. It's not, there's Actually, an should have been a pick. Did we not, we never did that as a pick, did we? No, we didn't. Image oh, you can pick it oh, now because it's now available on Android. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, that's a good one. I pick it. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll show you. <laughs> I pick it regularly. Though. I pick it all the time. I'll show you. I'll demonstrate <laughs> it. And, uh, sure. Because Jason Howell did a really good one, uh, uh, for all about Android last night. I liked it. Hmm. Uh, 
I should have done a, a, a hyperlapse of my entire drive across the country. It would yeah. have been like, you know, 30 minutes long, but it would have been really condensed down for like yeah. four days. <laughs> See the USA, the hyperlapse way. Da -da 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 -da. Yep. Uh, I am. Uh, drive through Kansas is quick. <laughs> I am intrigued by the notion that Microsoft is reinventing email for iOS. <laughs> I, so are we? I find that intriguing. Are you? Yeah. You want uh, to talk about that a little? Yeah. yeah. So Microsoft is seemingly. I'm saying seemingly because this information comes from a leaked page that our friend Walking Cat on Twitter found. Uh, it's a it's a new lightweight email application called Flow that is not meant to, supposedly to be a replacement for Outlook. It's meant to be a complement for it. Oh. So it's almost like a chat app from the description that um, you can you can use. It's still email, but you can go without subject lines or salutations or signatures. And you can just have this conversation with one other person and it will be part of of your Outlook right. email, um, you'll be able to search that particular conversation separately. Exchange will be on the back end. But it's it's meant to be kind of not Outlook, like something lighter than Outlook, an alternative for people who might, you know, gravitate to other messaging platforms or other chat this, or social this networking. This is not platform. a new idea. It's not a new idea on iOS, in fact. Yeah, doesn't Microsoft have another product called Flow or am I wrong? No, um, no, okay. Hmm. I, so. I don't know. I thought they did. They have another product. This is this is what I uh, likened it to. They have something called Skype Quick, which is a video right. chat app that's meant to be a lightweight chat app, similar to um, kind of what you do with SMS or I am, but for video. Yeah. And I think Flow is like Got Skype it. Quick, except it's for email. That's mm. that's kind of how I'm explaining it when I try to explain it. No, it's not out it, yet, right? I shouldn't go. Not out yet. Go looking for uh, it. But the the leaked page says it's going to be out for iPhone. Yeah. Um, well, that's what everybody uses, my, isn't it? I mean. Everybody. Everybody uses <laughs> everybody. Except us who are in the 3%. Like, so, yeah. That's what everybody but else is using. Screw you, Laporte. We don't know when or if it's coming also to Windows Phone or Android. Microsoft's not talking about it yet. But my guess would be it would come to all of the platforms yeah. if it's. Yeah. Just like Sway did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, all the platforms. <laughs> someday. Uh, someday. Someday. Someday <laughs> my sway will come. Uh, well, I'll look forward to this. Yeah. And uh, Paul has a little a little piece on Microsoft's secret plan. <laughs> <laughs> well, in other words, no, I, I, okay. I mean, it, it's, it makes sense that they would take their traditional products and move them to mobile devices, right? And... And some people consider that kind of shocking, right? When they put Office on iPad, a lot of people are like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Um, I think that makes sense. But, you know, that's not enough. If, if all Microsoft was going to do is ship a bunch of their old stuff on new platforms, that's not necessarily enough. And so with things like Office Mix and Office Sway, uh, Skype Quick, like Mary Jo said, or this new Flow uh, add-on uh, for Outlook, this is giving us clues to the new Microsoft, you know, right. that... It's not just about old ways of doing things. What, are, what about these new ways of doing things? Like, what are the new productivity things that we could, you know, the problems that we could solve? And I think that's what they're doing. I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. I think this is a uh, kind of a small indication of a wider trend. Mm -hmm. And they're all short, short product names that can that's be That's what I was just trying to find. So, uh, Mary Jo uh, Sway, me earlier today. Flow. Yep. We shared a bunch of names uh, that that would be potential Microsoft product names. Uh, the, the ones that Mary Jo came up with were fold, stir, broil, and bake. Slap. I came up with uh, thud, dud, <laughs> wah, <laughs> plop. Yeah. yeah, Microsoft plop. <clears throat> I think there's I like a lot. Thud. 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 Microsoft thud. 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 I like thud. thud. I think that's yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm running agree, Microsoft no, Thud on my iPhone. More. I like it. It's snappy. It's snappy. It's quick. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's it's like a it's like getting hit in the face with a brick. It's a <laughs> well. I mean, it's kind of. I mean, I think this is actually the this is the future. 
And, <laughs> this is the future. This is the future. Short, short four-letter words. We're going to talk about two things in this podcast in the future. One, they're going to be crazy cloud services that use Hadoop. But the second one is going to be stupid little mobile apps. Four-letter names. Four-letter names. Mobile apps. I'm using weak. Oh, <laughs> uh, God. What a life. Wow. 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 Oh, well. well, I don't know what's next because, uh, unfortunately, I'm oh, installing Windows. Oh. And uh, apparently, it's only 1% done. Oh. God, we have 2%. a lot left. What's going on here? I know. Okay, this is the whip longest. Through whip through. Would you whip through them? I'm just yep. going to sit back and watch the percentages go up while you... Well, most of this stuff isn't all that important. I mean, uh, no. there's a universal kind of app version of Dropbox, right? That ship on Windows Phone and Windows. Really? Okay. Uh, firmware cool. updates for Surface Pro 2 and 3. Yeah. That I actually, for some reason, were released on Windows 10 a week ago, which is kind of hilarious. Are those the same updates? I was curious. I believe so, because the um, the video driver update was one of them. Yeah. Okay. Um, Surface, oh, Surface 3 got the Windows 10 drivers, right? So if, if when I first got the device and I put the beta on, there were two devices missing in device manager. Now those are, are you know, are accounted for. Whew, you want to take the rest of these? <laughs> Lumia Not 640 really. now in the U.S. Woohoo! There you go. Not the usual low-end crap, is Paul's note. Oh, you like the 640? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the 640 is a pretty decent phone. It's uh, it's a mid-level phone. It's cheap. It's 120 bucks off contract. Um, it is locked uh, on Cricket, but it's coming to T-Mobile soon as well. It's a, it's it's not bad. It's not like a you know it's they have a lot of low end phones. This one's a step up. It's 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 pretty decent. <clears throat> this next one on our list I didn't even know about. So that's yours, Paul. The encryption. So Obama was uh, President Obama was having a meeting I guess yesterday to dis to, to start the discussion about what the United States is going to do if anything about policy regarding encryption in U.S. based computer products. Right. This all started because Apple last year decided to ship encryption by default which a lot of law enforcement people complained about. Are you getting bombarded by birds or something? No, I was just like... <laughs> Is there a guy in the ledge building. out there? What's going there's on? There's always weird sounds in my building that I'm curious. <laughs> Someday some guy in like <laughs> is going to swing through your window, you know. I know. I know. Oh! oh man. There's so many weird sounds <laughs> so and the, anyway, the point of this is simply that the major tech companies, including Microsoft, Apple, and Google, have all asked uh, the president to not do something stupid like restrict the use of encryption, require some kind of a backdoor uh, so that law enforcement can get into the devices and so forth. So we'll see what happens there. And I just, I just, I wrote this up because I really care about music services and I spend a lot of, in fact, I have a software pick related to this, but um you know, I see these deals, and I see I see Spotify, again, had another announcement today, like Leo said, about advancing yeah, into video. It's a big uh, announcement because we're in it. And I have to think, you know, if Microsoft isn't serious about Xbox Music to the point where mm -hmm. they have apps on Android and iOS, but they kind of stink, mm -hmm. and they don't, you never see stuff like this. And it, there will be stories where people will do like a roundup of internet streaming services and Xbox Music is never part of it, right? And so now Starbucks has gotten into what st is, is still sort of a, an Apple partner, but I think will be a former Apple partner soon, and they're in Starbucks. Yeah. And so they're going to be doing the music in Starbucks. They're yep. going to be giving free premium accounts to all Starbucks employees. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a major deal. I mean, it's a distribution point with like 7,000 retail locations in the United States alone, and then they're going to Canada in the UK as well. And so this is a service that I, I, I think has 60 million users. Yes. And... Um, and they're by the way, it's, moves. it's I mean, not just Spotify because Apple's about to come out with their service in about a month. Yes. yes, uh, yes, yes this yep. is, this is uh, you know, Jay-Z's title. Right. Nobody mentions Xbox Music anymore. Never, never. You got Amazon fact, and I mean, Google I, I, I'm and no there's, they're also by that. Yeah. No one even knows it exists. Yeah. Mm. Well, Mary Jo does. Mary Jo and I are, are two of the only people We're that have Xbox no. Music. There's others. Places, but, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Are they, I just but, think you gotta you gotta either go in or go home. Like you, yeah. you're doing it or you're not. Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. just never they're never mentioned anywhere. Well, do you, well even do Microsoft doesn't really mention it. They came out with a new work and play package, and the Xbox Music there. Pass isn't even part of it. Yeah, so they don't offer family subscriptions. You know, they don't have they don't even have something as as simple as uh, dynamic playlists. 
in Xbox Music. A, a kind of a fairly basic feature, which, by the way, Zune Music had 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, 11, nine years ago. I don't uh, know. It's a little frustrating. You know, it, it may be that Satya Nadella just really has a 10 ear. No, I mean, it, may, <laughs> it may be that they're going to focus on their core businesses. This is a different, uh, sure. you know. But the problem is there are people using it, and I, I'd rather have some clarity on this. And if this is not a a priority, if this is not Tell something us. they're going to... You know, yeah. So they do get... improve it. The funny thing is, like, I, I like the app. I like it on Windows Phone 8. I, I wait one or whatever. I, I, I like it. I use yeah. it every day. Um, I just, it just feels like it's kind of in some weird limbo. Though. Yeah. Sigh. All right. Uh, so you still can't yeah, see so the notes? Is that correct? <laughs> I'm, I'm almost, I'm, I'm seconds We're away. ready for the back of the book. I'm, I'm ready Ooh. for the back of the book. All right, let's take a break. And, uh, <laughs> and as soon as uh, the book gets back, we will, uh, we will have Windows 10. Can I talk about Braintree? And not talking Braintree mass. <laughs> Up the road a bit from Dedham. Uh, but I bet you that's where they started. I'm just thinking that's probably why they call themselves Brain Tree. It's actually, though, you could say it's because it's really smart. And it's like a money tree where it's just you shake it and money comes out for you. If you're a mobile developer, oh, Brain Tree, you got to love it. The payment solution. It's used by the biggest and best in the business. You Uber and Lyft. Right there, that tells you something. Airbnb and hotel tonight. Living Social. GitHub actually started <clears throat> with Braintree uh, and has and Braintree scaled right up with them. From your first dollar to your billionth, Braintree has made payment experiences seamless and magical for so many. And now you can do the same with excellent customer service, simple integration. Braintree gets you ready to receive payments quickly. And Braintree's continuous support, fast payouts, means you're going to be prepared as your company grows from your first dollar to your billionth dollar. They're, they're just awesome. By the way, there's a big, I can't remember what the number is. I think it's 70% of mobile carts are abandoned at checkout. So somebody goes to all the trouble to go through your app, pick out stuff, put it in the cart, goes to the cart, and then 70%, 7 out of 10 customers walk away because it's too hard, too complicated, or they don't want to enter a credit card number or whatever. And that's why your mobile payment solution is so important. And Braintree is really addressing that issue of mobile card abandonment. They have the best checkout experience anywhere. They take payments from Apple Pay, from PayPal, Bitcoin, Venmo, of course, credit cards. They, they make it seamless and magical for you and your customers. So I want you to try it. It's a full stack payment solution. All payment types across the board, superior fraud protection, customer service, fast payouts. And if this weren't enough, I'm going to get you your first $50,000 in payments fee free. $50,000 in transactions fee free. Braintreepayments.com slash windows. You were right, Paul. Braintreepayments.com. Slash windows. Uh, this is a this is, go down the road from Paul. Turn left on uh, Route 128, and there it is. Braintree payments. That's, uh, fairly accurate. Dot com. <laughs> Everything's turn left on Route 128. Braintreepayments.com slash windows, or unless you go up by 95. But I like the mass turnpike myself. Well, actually, for that stretch of road, they're the same. Yeah. It's got the little pilgrim's hat with an arrow through it. I always thought that that really was kind of a counterproductive logo. Oh, that's the mass, the mass turnpike. That's yeah. the mass turnpike. I don't. It seems like that's something. What? <laughs> Do you really want to emphasize that? Portion? Sending mixed messages. It's a little mixed. It's a little mixed. My favorite part about Windows, uh, I'm sorry, about Windows, about Route 128 is that when you uh, go south of 128, which is south of 95, and then 95 veers off, and you're still on 128 going south, but now you're also on 93 going north. <laughs> Welcome to Massachusetts. <laughs> That's it, right in a nutshell. <laughs> it's like, makes <clears throat> no sense at all. Have you ever tried to drive in Boston? My God, insane. <laughs> yep. It is. Insane. <laughs> well, at least there's great signs everywhere, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> I have such memories yeah. of being lost I told you about the state, the state trooper, right? With the directions? I told you the story. No, well, tell it again. He said, what do I look like? Rand <laughs> McNally? Rand F. McNally? When I asked him for directions. Uh, officer, how do I get uh, to... Uh, 
That's what he said. Fanoy, oh, fan oil. How do you pronounce that? Faneuil Hall? Yep. <laughs> fan oil. Fan oil hall. Fan oil hall. Fan oil hall. What do I look like? F and Rand McNally? <laughs> Stay trooper. You're in tax dollars at work. Yeah. <laughs> Go find well, it yourself. I don't, what he's really saying is, I, I got no idea. Yeah, he has no idea. I got no idea. Actually, his eventual advice was to drive into the tunnel with all the signs in front of it that said, don't drive into the tunnel. I'm serious. See that big says, dig over there? Don't worry about the signs. Just, Just go. Just go. <laughs> don't go that way. What could possibly go wrong? Tip of the week from Paul Therott. Crazy. Crazy. So I mentioned that I'm probably going to be splitting the Windows 10 book into like a mobile book and a non-mobile book, right? And so one of the little side things about this is I've never completed the Windows Phone 8.1 book. I, I've just got, this is too much to do, I think, especially with moving to the new site this year. So I think I'm going to skip over that. And what I'm going to do instead is detail a bunch of stuff that's new between 8.1 8, 8 1 and 8, right? If you update from Windows Phone 8 to 8.1. And so this week I started doing some of that stuff. This is stuff that was in the book or was going to be in the book. Um, and so the first three are out now, and it's, it's basically kind of really neat Windows 8 one, uh, Windows Phone 8 one features that are differentiators from previous versions. Uh, Wi-Fi Sense, Storage Sense, and Data Sense, and I'll do one on Battery Saver next. But um, Data Sense is, uh, or I should say these Sense apps are uh, mostly settings apps, although confusingly one of them isn't. Um, and they allow you to do such things as... Uh, you know, monitor your data usage, limit your data usage over cellular, you know, jump over to Wi-Fi networks automatically. Uh, the Wi-Fi Sense uh, feature has a cool feature where there are over a million uh, public hotspots that require some kind of authentication. You know, you go to a web page, you put in a name, a phone number, maybe your email address, and then it lets you onto the network. It will actually auto log you onto those networks using bogus data, which is kind of hilarious. Um, and then the... Um, and then storage sense, which lets you manage the data on the device, which is particularly important if you have, well, are running out of space and you can figure out what it is. Or if you have an SD card and you want to do things like, well, I, I was using the internal storage for apps and for data, uh, for music and you know other things. I want to move that stuff over to the card. This app gives you uh, the capability to do that. And so just basically, I'm going to, this, these are the first three. There's going to be a bunch more of these, uh, and I'll be doing these over the next few weeks. So. If you're using Windows Phone, um, just you know, stay tuned to the site, and there'll be more. And then the software pick. Actually, I like your idea of um, Hyperlapse. I should have had that, and so I'll just add that as one. Uh, Hyperlapse is available. I think it's actually on all. Is it on all three? It's uh, iOS, Android, and Windows Phone now. Is that correct? I, yeah, I think so. I, I think, think so. Android was the last, uh, and it's. I've well, only made it a short, beta. but I. So you'll have to do that yeah, thing. You, join a, the you have to do that Google and, Plus yeah, uh, community thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I did a short one of going through the car wash. It's on YouTube. It's uh, it's one of the most popular videos on YouTube. It's a really fast trip through a car wash. Um, it's a cool app. I, I like it. I, I don't have like an extreme skiing video I can use. Um, so I, I got my car washed. Um, but the other pick I had is is Mix Radio. And, and you remember, you might remember Mix Radio. It started as Nokia Mix Radio. And it was uh, a streaming music service that was only available on... Uh, Lumia handsets. And then Microsoft bought Nokia and, and Mixed Radio came over with that. And at the time, I was thinking Microsoft should use this as part of Xbox Music. And it, it's, it's a, it, it, it has functionality that Xbox Music lacks. And then they sold it off. And so a uh, line bought Mixed Radio. And no, no huge surprise, but this week, line released versions of mixed radio for both iOS uh, and Android. Line is a messaging now, app very popular in um yeah. Asia. So here's the the good news is uh they have pledged and promised not to uh, ignore Windows Phone that as they update the application they're going to update it on Windows Phone as well. Um it's a free service. Uh, it it even has offline capabilities for free. It has had handcrafted uh mu you know music mixes like radio stations. I mean, long before Beats ever was a thing, I mean, they were doing the same thing. In other words, human beings, music experts actually creating these mixes. Um, it's it's a great little app. I mean, in the sense that you don't have to have just one music app on your phone. I mean, I think this is one, regardless of what kind of phone that you have, you should give it a shot. You should check it out. It's a it's a great little app. Um, and now it must it's be available. frustrating, though, huh? Hmm? It must be frustrating, though. What's that? Well, it was Microsoft, and now it's not. I wish they had kept it. Yeah. I really liked Mixed Radio, and I liked, as it was Nokia first, uh, well, let's say when it was Nokia, um, I watched it 
you know, be updated and improve over time. And I, I really liked where it was heading and, and I still do, but it's, it's of slightly less interest to kind of Microsoft watchers because it's not Microsoft anymore, but, um, it's, it's a great app and you should definitely check it out. Is it, you, you do, you do have to subscribe, right? I mean, is there a, or is it, uh, you can, but you don't have to. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. cool. That is your pick. And if you do, it's cheap. I don't. I think I don't subscribe, but I, I want to say it's. I think it's like three ninety nine. Oh, that's a good deal. Oh, that's a good yeah, deal. It's not expensive. Mix radio. Our enterprise pick of the week comes to us from Mary Jo Foley. Uh, my pick of the week is something called a convenience roll up, and convenience roll ups are um, packages of hot fixes that Microsoft makes available um, every once in a while, where they take like 70 hot fixes that they issued over a number of months. They roll them all up. You can install them as a single package and only have to reboot once, I believe. Um, so Microsoft uh, issued a few of these over the past couple of years. There was uh, one back in 2013 that we wrote about called Slow Boot, Slow Login Hot Fix Rollup. That was 90 hot fixes for <laughs> Windows 7 wow. and Windows Server 2008. These are this is what they used to call service packs, right? These call they're, they're very similar to service yeah. packs. Yes. No, it's a convenience. Convenience. It's a convenience <laughs> for you and me yeah. to get these. Right. So now the here's the big news. There's going to be another one of these for Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008 R2 coming sometime probably around the release of Windows 10. I don't know how many hot fixes that thing's going to roll up, but supposedly quite a few. Um, and Microsoft is billing it as if you're on Windows 7 Service, uh, service Pack 1, Windows Server 2008 R2, you're going to want to apply this uh, convenience update when it comes out to help you get ready for Windows 10. But even if you're not really getting ready for, for Windows 10, it will be a much more convenient way for you to get all those hot fixes and apply them at once. So the idea is to watch out for this coming convenience update sometime in the next couple months. All right. Cool. Got a code name for us? I do. And another one, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. It's Ticino, maybe? T I C I N O. I think if, well, if it's Italian, it would it's be on Ticino. Swiss. Oh, I don't know. It's, yeah, Switzerland. Swiss. Um, so Ticino is a Swiss canton, which means a federal state, I guess. Um, and that is the code name for what became Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is the lightweight Good. editor that Microsoft rolled out recently for Mac, Linux, and Windows. And um, the reason it's codenamed to Chino, this is kind of interesting, is the team that supposedly engineered code is based in the Microsoft Zurich office. Well, they probably know how to pronounce it. They might know how to pronounce it. Um, and I have to say thanks to Jublo Solutions, uh, one of my Twitter buddies, for that tip. Good. Good, good, good. And finally, a beer. Give me beer. A beer. This is a beer Paul Therott has to find because <laughs> he would love this beer. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's from Bell's Brewing in Michigan. It's called The Wild One. Mm. It's a wild ale slash sour beer. And if you know what Flemish red beers are, very similar to that. Like Chimay it's red? Is that? Kind of like that, yep. So it's as this is a sour brown ale that they age in oak red wine barrels to make it sour. And the good part is if you're somebody who's kind of on the fence about drinking sour beers, this is a very nice transitional way to get into sours. Um, I actually it's called love Bell's sours, and I think you got us into it. I love sours. Yeah, now, yeah. I used to hate them. The first time I had one, I was like, eh, vinegar. But now I love them. Um, this one's really, really good. It's easy to drink. Um, not too sour. It's got a very nice mellow flavor. And if you're a wine drinker, kind of looking for a beer to bridge you over to, a, a, ah, a beer to bridge you over, yeah, this sure. would be a good one. There you go. Yep. It's kind of a whiny beer. It is. <laughs> a <whiny> beer. <laughs> good way of putting it. Yeah. Well, I don't mean to whine, but we've come to the end of the line. <laughs> I am. Uh, I I was really hopeful. I actually did install it, and it's done. But now I got to paste my Microsoft uh, password in there, and it's long, and I can't do it while we do the show. Yeah. So. Uh, By the way. Yeah. Um, I installed uh, the leaks build that came before this on my ThinkPad. 
Yeah. I got Windows Hello support through the finger oh. creator oh, wow. thing, which is yeah, it's pretty sweet. That's the new sign-on system, the bi bionic yeah. sign-on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it like natively supported it. Neato. Nice. Neato. Paul, Mary Jo, thank you so much. Paul Thurot's at Thurot.com. T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T. Dot com. Mary Jo's at all about Microsoft.com. And together they formed the the dynamic duo <laughs> behind <laughs> Windows Weekly every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC, live.twit.tv, or get it on demand after the fact. Audio and video available everywhere, including the new Spotify. Happy to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, please watch uh, every week. Subscribe, if you will. I think you'll, you'll. When does the Spotify thing happen, Leo? <clears throat> as soon as you get the update to the so Well, no, I take that back because I did get the update to the software on uh, iOS, and I don't see it yet. But it's got the new stuff, so I think yeah. it's just going to be a matter of pushing it. We've been um, uploading, you know, the data, <laughs> the, the audio and video to them for a while, you know, a month or <laughs> so. So just for t internal testing. So should be soon. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about that. That's uh, 60 million more people that can hear you than your thoughts. <laughs> as insane as, as they insane may be. As insane as they may be. <laughs> uh, so that's good. So yeah, if you have the new Spotify, keep your eye appealed for uh, Twit Podcasts on there as well. Uh, and of course, uh, Microsoft has the, uh, I think they call it the Xbox Music Store. There's also a podcast app on your Windows phone. We'll be there everywhere, frankly that you can get your shows. That's where we are. Do subscribe so you get every week. Thank you both for being here. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. <laughs>